Hey everyone, it's Matt from Matt Explores and uh, coming to you today from my garage here in uh, beautiful Indiana. It's actually not beautiful today, which is why we're in the garage. Uh, we're also practicing social distancing. So the Jeep and I are just kind of hanging out in the garage today and uh, making this video for you. I hope uh, as you're watching this video, you are safe and sound and your family is healthy. Uh, and we're going to keep on keeping through this together. And uh, yeah, it's been tough for car guys that don't really get to go out and shop for cars, uh, go to Cars and Coffee and, and hang out with our friends. But, um, but thank God for the internet where I can continue to watch uh, YouTube videos and, uh, and of course make YouTube videos. So uh, today I wanted to bring you what is probably the last video in the series for the uh, WK2 here. Um, if you're in the market for buying a uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee and you stumbled upon this video, uh, welcome. And uh, please take some time, check out the 5, 10, and 15,000 mile reviews I did. Um, this is actually just going to be more of a uh, quick update video. I uh, wanted to talk about um, a couple of issues and, uh, and a couple of upgrades that I did to the car. So uh, just wanted to kind of keep this short and sweet, but uh, get some content out there. So first off, I um, uh, wanted to provide an update if you uh, were watching the, uh, the 15,000 mile review, and I know several people posted some comments uh, about the rattle in the sunroof. And uh, luckily, we were able to track that down. The local dealership here uh, in Noblesville found that there was one screw missing and another screw that had been put in improperly. Uh, and then basically the frame, uh, part of the frame of the sunroof had just worked itself loose. And um, they were able to wrap it up in like an hour. And uh, I've put probably 2,500, maybe 3,000 miles uh, on it since. And um, the, the vehicle is back to being rattle free. So um, all the bad things I said about this car falling apart, uh, as it turns out, was just two screws in the sunroof. So I'm uh, really happy to have that solved for. Um, and, uh, and we had another issue with, um, um, what smelled like burning oil. We were pretty sure that there was an oil leak. And, um, so we got that sorted out as well. Uh, it just turned out to be, um, really kind of a shitty oil change and they spilled some oil on the alternator. And, uh, when the alternator finally got hot enough, uh, it started to, uh, to burn out that oil. So, um, really those are the only two issues at, um, uh, just over one year of ownership, around 22,000 miles uh, of driving. Uh, again, my driving is a combination of back and forth to work, which is about a 72 mile total drive every day. Uh, we've done a couple of road trips in this vehicle as well. So it's it's seen some some long highway miles and, uh, and just running around town as well. And so the vehicle has performed really, really well with the exception of those two issues, which turned out to be relatively minor um, and with the oil situation not really an issue at all um, the vehicle has performed uh, flawlessly so super happy with uh, with fit finish um, the the interior um, you know I had some concerns that the seats were, were wearing a little too quickly but um, what they looked like 10,000 miles ago is what they look like now so I think they just broke into to where they're gonna be so uh, so overall at 20,000 miles um, vehicles holding up well, it's driving well, um, still plenty of power from the V6. So, um, for the people that inevitably will comment, why didn't you buy a Hemi? Um, this is just fine. So, uh, yeah, so let's get into, uh, a couple of the upgrades that I also wanted to point out and uh, provide a little feedback on. So let's do that right now. So there are two upgrades um, that I've done since the 15,000 mile review that I wanted to just provide an update on in this video uh, in hopes that folks might uh, be looking uh, for these two items as well. The first is obviously I have gotten rid of the stock Trailhawk wheels. I have been searching for a wheel for this vehicle almost since the day that I bought it. Um, the Trailhawk is a great looking truck but compared to the Cherokee Trailhawk, um, candidly, even like the Compass Trailhawk, the wheel and tire package that comes on this car is minivan 
and I just do not like the look of it. So the tires I changed out immediately. Uh, the all-terrain TA uh, KO2s, I'm running a 265-65, fantastic tire. Um, I haven't done a lot of off-roading, mostly just uh, mud and sand and um, some, some fire roads in um, Tennessee. But snow and ice and rain, these are fantastic. They're a little loud on the uh, dry pavement. I talked about that in some other videos, but all around, this tire has performed amazingly, but the wheels were just letting me down. They just did not look aggressive enough. And so uh, this is an American Racing AR201. It is a 18 by 9 with a plus 35 offset. And um, you can't really tell in the picture, but uh, they're not just flat black. It's actually a, um, a textured, almost like Teflon coating. So think the inside of a nonstick uh, skillet. And because of that, they stay really, really clean. I've actually never washed these wheels. They've been through a automatic car wash one time, but this is weeks of occasional stop and go driving. Uh, and they look like I just washed them. And so um, they don't attract dirt, brake dust. So I really like that. I also like the fact that the what are they? Parallelograms, I guess, along the outer edge. The uh, the trim pieces are um, in the fake beadlock are actually milled out, so water can escape from that inner channel in the wheel. And that's one of the things that really irritated me with my methods that I have on the rim is that there's always kind of a dirty water spot there um, that um, just collects anytime I drive in the rain. So so far, I've been really really happy. As you can see, um, I'll kind of pan back. The plus 35 puts the tire right at the fender. It's uh, just tucked in just a little, but about a good inch, if not an inch and a half, maybe two inches uh, more offset than what was on the factory. And so uh, gives the Jeep a much broader, brawnier look. Um, I have noticed uh, ever so slightly more wind noise because I think there's actually wind hitting the side of the tire. That might be in my imagination. But um, yeah, really happy with these. Um, they were around, I think about $240 a piece. So they are not cheap, but there's not a whole lot of options for this vehicle. And uh, I really just wanted to buy one wheel that I knew I could stick with and would like, and, and these really fit uh, that purpose. Along with the wheels, I also went with the AirLink leveling system for the quadra lift suspension and you can't really tell in my garage but i am sitting about as level as you can sit uh the biggest complaint one of the biggest complaints i had with the grand cherokee trailhawk was that when i was in normal ride height um, and pulled up next to say a limited um, they actually i would sit lower so uh, with the air link, I'm now sitting at 35 inches uh, at the top of my fender. So with the 30 and a half, almost 31 inch tire, 35 inches at the fender, I have a really good kind of appropriate, I think, amount of spacing. When you go into off-road one or off-road two, still plenty of travel. But um, could you fit a 275, 65 in here? You probably could. Uh, I will say with this setup, with the nine inch wide wheel and the 35 offset I do rub uh, right here there is um, the felt cardboardy piece uh, does have some scuff marks when I come in and out of my driveway I do rub just a little bit but overall with the air link um, for $50 I do not think you can find a better upgrade to a vehicle than that and so um, kudos to the air link folks um, they don't pay me but um really like their product. And again, I'm only running the leveling kit. They do make a kit that uh, will let you run an off-road one effectively at all times. But I found for me, this is perfect. The side effect of the AirLink is actually one of the problems I had with the vehicle was how loud the sunroof was. And um, while I am no scientist, I do believe that the front end sitting up just a little bit higher has changed the way that the wind flows up uh, and over the hood. It's either 
made it smoother or made it rougher, but whatever it's done, I can now drive on the interstate with my sunroof open in aero mode uh, and it is much quieter. Um, so kind of a side effect. Uh, I may be crazy, but um, it's certainly, I've noticed it. Um, those that have ridden in the car with me have noticed it. And so uh, the only thing that I can attribute it to is the fact that the nose of the vehicle is, again, sitting up just ever so slightly that I think is affecting the way the uh, wind goes up and over the car. So uh, yeah, other than that, that's uh, that's pretty much what's changed since the, uh, the 15,000 mile review. If you have any questions on these, please leave a uh, comment below and uh, I'll try to answer uh, any specific questions you have about the air links or the, uh, the wheels. So I'm gonna wrap it there. Thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, checking up on the WK2. Again, if you've not watched the 5, 10, and 15, please check those out. I'll throw a link to them in the uh, comment section below. And uh, leave me your thoughts. Uh, do you like these wheels? Do you not like these wheels? Um, anything else you think I should do to the vehicle? Um, I'm kind of pausing a little bit on the Grand Cherokee because uh, it is my daily driver and uh, I've got it in a good place right now. When I do return to work, I park in a parking garage. So um, my dreams of a roof rack and uh, some other things are just not gonna happen on this car. But uh, we're gonna continue the progress on the Ram 2500. So um, we've already been able to install the new wheels and tires. Um, we were able to uh, I was able to put a two sets of off-road lights, both from Baja Design, and so uh, we'll talk a little bit about those uh, in an upcoming video. And I'm sitting currently next to a brand new, yet to be assembled front runner uh, rack for the bed of the uh, the 2500. And so, really starting to make some progress there, and I can't wait to show that to you in an upcoming video. But this is probably where the Grand Cherokee. Uh, stays. Um, the wheels are right, the tires are right, and uh, the ride height is right. And so everything else is probably just going to be where it is. But um, there's no promises in that. And uh, at some point, I'll get tired of this car again. And it's cheaper to upgrade than to, uh, than to buy new. So stay tuned for some more videos. And thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. And uh, I welcome you to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks, and uh, again, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk soon.